God cannot lie He promised to save His people He never changed His mind Today He still calls them my people My people, my people Well, hi there, and welcome once again to our Bible studies here at Bible Talk. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're back again. Uh, Alice and I want to just greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen to that. Our dear brother Mark is uh, on his way back from a, a, a vacation with his family down in the south part of Florida. So we're here without him yes. on this, this time. He's here in spirit. But he, yes, he is. So we're, we're glad you can be with us. Yes, we it's are. always good to be together. I wish it was more face-to-face than through a, an, an electronic medium. But we're but, thankful for the But we're thankful for it, yes, yes absolutely. Are, absolutely. So we're studying, we're continuing on in our study of the letters to the seven churches of Revelation. Mm -hmm. And we started last week in the letter to <clears throat> Philadelphia. So that's where we're going to pick it up. We left off in the middle of verse 8, mm -hmm. chapter 3, verse 8. eight. Yes. Uh, but before we start back up, let me first of all yes. ask, Father, that, that you would bless this time that we have together, Lord God. Lord, that you would just quicken your word to our hearts, to our spirits, through your Holy Spirit, Lord God. That we might see your Son, Jesus Christ, ever more clearly. Because that's our desire, to see him more clearly, to be more like him in everything that we do and say, Lord. So we just thank you for your word, your word which transforms us, which changes us, Lord God. The tool that you use as the potter to mold these earthen vessels. Thank you, Lord. So just bless this time, Lord, and use it for the glory of your name. I just ask that, Father, in the name of your Son, Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. All right, so as we're ready to start, I'm going to ask Alice to read Revelations 3, 8. Okie dokie. I know your deeds. Behold, I have put before you an open door, which no one can shut, because you have a little power, and have kept my word, and have not denied my name. All right. That's where we left off last week, in the middle of that verse. And we left off, we were just beginning to talk about having a little power. Okay? Power. So I want to kind of recap and go back and, and just look at that. Okay. See, and I, I mentioned some of this at the end of our last session, but... Shouldn't hurt to hear it again. Oh, <laughs> Unlike the two cities and the churches in Sardis and Laodicea that surrounded Philadelphia, mm -hmm. both spiritually and geographically, <laughs> right, right. both of them here in the book of Revelation in front and behind it, right? Mm -hmm. This church in Philadelphia would have not had any political clout or riches to boast of like those cities did. Mm -hmm. And indeed, that's what most people think of when they think in terms of power. Money. Right? Money, and, money and political power. I mean, you know, it's power. That's, that's what, what it's all about. That's where power is. And money and political, well, that's a lie from the pits of hell. That's because this present world is in the power of the evil one, who is a liar by nature and the father of lies. Power and strength don't come. From, your, from having riches or having, you know, being in a high political position. Mm -hmm. Because God's ways are definitely not our ways, all right? Remember that the Apostle Paul wrote, I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians, or 2 Corinthians rather, uh, chapter 12, verses 9 and 10. And he has said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather boast about my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am well content with weaknesses, with insults, with distresses, with persecutions, with difficulties, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Now, that's about as backwards from the world as you can get, really. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. When we believe the word, because we know that it originates, as it started here in this letter, mm -hmm. with him who is holy and who is true, mm -hmm. we will also boast about our weaknesses and begin to boast in the Lord. And like Paul, we will begin to proclaim truly, I can do all things through Christ, through him mm -hmm. who strengthens mm -hmm. me. Philippians 4.13. 
Why? Well, again, I'll go back to I'll go back to Corinthians, First Corinthians, chapter one. Right? Paul wrote, "Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men." For consider your calling, brethren, that there were not many wise according to the flesh, nor many mighty, nor many noble, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong. The very root of this, perhaps the, the most foolish thing of all, <clears throat> is also found, or revealed, in that same chapter of Paul's letter to the church in Corinth, when he wrote, For the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians 1.18. That's where the power is, in the word of the cross. Amen. You see, it's all about, it's about the word of the cross. Jesus emptied himself of his own power mm -hmm. and humbled himself yes. by becoming obedient to the point of death, death even death on a cross. That's what it says in Philippians chapter 2, verses 7 and 8. And Jesus truly had no stately form or majesty that we should look upon him, nor appearance that we should be attracted to him. That's what God spoke through the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah 53. Verse 2, 750 years before his birth. And that humility, what he just spoke about, is when he died. On the cross, on absolutely. The cross. So that would, for us, humility, I would think, would be when we're dying to ourselves. Well, it is, and we're going to, that's where we're, we are going there, but you're absolutely right. But that's where power lies. It's, yes. you know, it's, it is so antithetical to what the, what the world teaches and trains people. Mm -hmm. So remember. You know, when you send your little children off to get trained by the world in their government schools, same, same. That this is what they're getting trained mm -hmm. in, right? Jesus didn't have an appearance that we should be attracted to him, mm -hmm. right? Never was there a greater display of humility or an apparent lack of power as the cross of Jesus Christ. That's right. That's right. It looks like defeat. It looks like absolute defeat. Yes. In the garden, the night that he was taken, Right, he proclaimed. He talked to his disciples, talking to Peter, I think specifically, and he said he could have called upon the Father to send twelve legions of angels. That's what it says in Matthew twenty-five, right? right. But he would not, because he had surrendered his will to the Father's. Just as moments before, when he was in the garden praying, he said, "Not my will, but yours be done." And it says in, in, in John chapter 5, Jesus said he could do nothing of himself. Nothing. Now, that is a total lack of power. Absolutely. I can't do anything. That's what he said. I can't do anything of myself. And that's what we should be proclaiming. That is God's word. Yes. And here, in verse 8, it goes on, and Jesus commends him because he says, you, you have kept my word and have not denied my name. That's God's word, that word of the cross. Yes. So Paul would declare then, listen to this from Philippians, Philippians chapter 3. But whatever things were gained to me, those things I have counted as loss for the sake of Christ, not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. The righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection mm -hmm. and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death in order that I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. And so that's Philippians chapter 3. I read verses 7 and 9 to 11, right? It's about power, yes. the resurrection mm -hmm. power of God. But that comes from that total surrender, that total, total humility. Surrender. That total obedience, right? Giving up our will. You know, and, and the Apostle Paul, he certainly demonstrated through his teachings, and, and more importantly, perhaps, through his life, mm. that he was not ashamed of this gospel. That's right. This gospel of the cross, right? He boasted in and about his God. 
and the work of Jesus upon the cross of Calvary. Though the Apostle Peter stated, and he, listen, this is what Peter said. I, I'm going to He said, some of the things that Peter, Paul writes, oh my goodness, they're yeah, hard to understand, they're difficult, all right? Yeah, yeah. Well, he said that he found parts of Paul's letters difficult to understand. Now, Paul certainly would, have, would not have had any difficulty in understanding what Peter wrote when Peter wrote in 1 Peter 2.9, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, which is also a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You see what it says here, it's not about, it's about not denying Jesus' name, but proclaiming it. Okay, you're either denying it or you're proclaiming it. It's one or the other. Proclaiming that name that is above all names. Proclaiming that only name given by which men can be saved. It is about the power mm. of praise. Amen. There's power in praise. Oh, yes. right? They had a little yes, power. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's go on. I'm going to read Revelation 3, 9. Now, okay? Behold, I will cause those of the synagogue of Satan who say that they are Jews and are not but lie. I will make them come and bow down at your feet and make them know that I have loved you. The first thing that Jesus says here is in that verse, I will cause. Yes. You see, unlike what most, and this is statistically correct, I mean it is that most Christians in the United <coughs> States, when I say Christians, I'm talking about people that call themselves Christians, right? Most Christians in the United States, and believe me, elsewhere, mm. believe that it's somewhere in the Bible where God says, God helps those who help themselves. Yes, many, many, many believe that, yes. A, a majority, I, mm. actually a majority of, of yes. Christians in this country, according to a survey that yes. I read a couple of years ago, actually believe that's in the Bible. God helps those who help themselves. It's not. No, nope. nowhere. God helps those who praise Him yes. and rely on His salvation. Absolutely. Okay, I, I want to read you something, because we're talking about power, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I want to read to you from Isaiah 42. I'm going to start oh, at verse 10. Okay. Isaiah 42, first, starting at verse 10. Oops, oops, oops. I As you turn it. the flip the pages of your Bible, because I'm sure you're testing what I say. I'm sure you got your Bible 42. handy. 42. Verse 10. Got it. Sing to the Lord a new got song. It. Yes. Sing his praise from the end of the earth. You who go down to the sea and all that is in it, you islands and those who dwell in them, let the wilderness and its cities lift up their voices. The settlements where Kedar inhabits, let the inhabitants of Salah sing aloud. Let them shout for joy from the tops of the mountains. Mm -hmm. Let them give glory to the Lord and declare his praise in the coastlands. The Lord will go forth like a warrior. He will arouse his zeal like a man of war. He will utter a shout. Yes, he will raise a war cry. He will prevail against his enemies. Hallelujah. <laughs> you want to see power in your oh life? You want to see victory he'll, in your life? He'll go forth don't depend. Him. Don't. You know, in America, it's been a teaching. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it's a John Wayne kind of thing. <laughs> we got to be self-reliant. We got to, you know, we got to stand up and take care of ourselves. No, no. We need to throw ourselves on the grace and mercy of God and trust in Him to do it. Amen. It says if we praise Him, He will go out Amen. and defeat His enemies, which are our enemies, all right? If we keep His word, which He watches over to perform, mm -hmm. and don't deny His name, mm -hmm. this following verse will become the experience of our lives. No weapon that is formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that accuses you in judgment, you will condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their vindication is from me, declares the Lord. Isaiah 54, 17. It's a formula. It's, it, you know, it's so logical and it's so it clear. Is. I mean, God has laid it all out. The problem is most people don't know what he's laid out because they don't know the word. And, you know, and reading the word is great, but you've got to believe it. And to believe it, you have to hear from the Lord. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. All right? Amen. 
That's why I've said so many times, and it couldn't hurt me to say it again. God has appointed teachers in the church. And I, and I believe, well, I, I think it's, that's the calling of my life, has been to teach the Word. But here, when we gather in these Bible studies, my goal is to put these teachings into your brain. That's my goal. Mm -hmm. But you know, the Word says, Paul wrote in the Romans, said, it's with the heart man believes. Not with the brain, because you're not to lean on your own understanding. It takes the Holy Spirit to move what I, if I, I am successful in putting anything, this word, in your brain, right. it's got to take the Holy Spirit to move it from your brain Into to your heart. Amen. Because it's what the heart man believes. And the only way that's going to happen is if you take what you hear and have a little conversation with him. <clears throat> don't, don't take my word for anything. I've, I've said that over and over. That's right. Test what I say. That's what the Word of God says. Mm -hmm. Test what you hear. Many false prophets are going abroad. Oh, and boy, that is true in this day and age. Believe me. So how do you test it? What you hear here, talk to the Lord about it after. If something strikes you during the course of the Bible study, study it. Get into the Word. Talk to the Lord about it. Because then it will become the reality of your heart. And what becomes the reality of your heart will become the life that you live. Because, you see... What you believe in your heart will determine the choices that you make. Right. And the choices you make will determine the life that you live. Hallelujah. It's, it's that simple. And so true. But this is God's desire mm. that no weapon formed against you yes. will prosper. So here in, in this city in Philadelphia, you know, things aren't going all great for them. Mm. They don't have any power. You know, they're not, they don't. They have a little power. Well. And then, but let, let's just go on because it all, it all come together, I believe. Mm -hmm. Then he talks about the synagogue of Satan. Yes. Now, interestingly, the only other church among the seven that the Lord has nothing bad to say about, right? Mm -hmm. Here in the letter to the church of Philadelphia, the Lord has nothing bad to say to them. Right. There's no, but I have this against you. None of that, right? The only other church is in Smyrna. And it was there, too, that the Lord speaks of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Yes. Revelation 2.9. Mm -hmm. So there's the two places where that occurs in these seven letters. And both of those churches are the churches that God has nothing to con condemn. All right? Mm. That's interesting. It is interesting. Mm. You know, a lot of times it's like if, if things are going bad, we think, well, this is, yeah, that's bad. No, no. If things are going bad, that's good. Yes. <laughs> right? We should rejoice. We should rejoice. That's why, you know, Paul said it. We exult in our tribulations. James said it. We consider it all joy when we encounter various... I mean, it goes on and on. Because the fact is, that's what God uses. And you want to know something. When you're talking about praising Him, and giving Him thanks, if you believe He's in control, that would be so easy to do. Yes. If no you, matter what's yes. going if on. If you believe He's in control. Yes. By the way... Whether you believe it or not, he is. He is. Absolutely. He is in control. But it's, it, again, the choices that you make in the life that you live will be based on whether you actually believe that or not. Amen. That's right. Okay. So, I want you to take note of the fact that the word synagogue that's used here in, in the Greek, and it's very much like the word church or ecclesia. Mm -hmm. and both of them denote a gathering of people. And in the context of these scriptures, it's always gathering for a religious purpose, right? right? Mm -hmm. So we have these Jews, these people who say that they are Jews and are not, but lie. Mm -hmm. So the reality is, just as then, centuries ago, right. many people today call themselves the people of God, Christians, mm -hmm. and yet are not. They're lying. But they're, first of all, lying to themselves because they have believed a lie. They believe a lie because they're not equipped to know the truth. Yes. John 8, 31, right, and 32 says this. So as Jesus was saying to those Jews who had believed him, if you abide, if you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. You see, the believers 
in the church in Philadelphia here who were pleasing to God had kept his word. And they knew the truth. The unbelieving Jews in the synagogue of Satan had rejected Jesus. The word made flesh who dwelt among us. They disconnected from the word. So they would believe a lie. They didn't know the truth. So many of them, I would certainly say a majority of those who call themselves Christian, have disconnected from the word and have come to believe a lie. They believe you can live like the world, being conformed to this world, and be pleasing to the Lord. You and cannot. One of the things that is happening is that it's the lying pen of the scribes. And beware, yes. Jeremiah said, beware the lying pen of the scribes. people are reading Bibles, oh. but <laughs> the word that they're reading is well, not yeah, the, the word. You know, I, I don't, I, I, this may sound harsh, but the fact of the matter is, you know, in our ministry, we've traveled a good part of the world. Yes. And I have ministered in churches of lots and lots many, lots. many, many different denominations. Mm -hmm. I've taught passes of many, from many different denominations. And we see this disconnect from yes. the Word. Yes. We see Christians spending less and less time studying to show themselves approved, as Paul wrote to Timothy, right? If you don't know the word, you're not going to know the truth. No. Huh? You'll be deceived. I mean, this is simple logic. Want me to do a formula? Jesus said that he is the truth. Jesus is the word. No Jesus, no truth. Mm -hmm. Bada bing, bada boom, all right? Here's the truth. When you are faithful and hold his word and don't mm -hmm. deny his name, these people who are, in the, who are in opposition to you, the Lord says, I will make them come and bow down at your feet. Mm -hmm. Well, we already talked about, no weapon formed against you shall prosper, right? Right, right? Jesus said in Matthew 23, whoever exalts himself shall be humbled. Whoever humbles himself shall be exalted. <clears throat> These, this church in Philadelphia, these are believers that are lowly and humble. Mm, yes. God is going to raise them up. He's going to exalt them. And the Christians so-called, or the Jews so-called, who, but who are not, they're proud. Yes. I mean, this is the mark of the Pharisees and Sadducees, yes. was their, their hypocrisy and their pride, right? God will abase them. He'll put them down. But he'll put them down before you. Mm. Wow. That's part of the inheritance of the saints, brother, sister. <laughs> not only that when he does this he will make them those other people mm. right who are not bond servants of the most high who are not part of the remnant of God God will make them know that I have loved you that's what it's written that's in this verse said. when and how will Jesus do that when he comes back when he stands before the Father, listen what Jesus said in Matthew 10. All right, all right, all right. Therefore, everyone who confesses me before men, I will also confess him before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny him before my Father who is in heaven. On that day, when all mankind is there, on that day of judgment, Jesus Christ is going to stand in the presence of all and confess you, if you've been faithful to him and held fast to his word, and you have professed and confessed mm -hmm. Jesus before men, he is going to confess you before the Father. He is going to speak of his love for you because of your love for him mm -hmm. before the Father. That's a fact. And everybody's going to be there to see that. You know, I, I just uh, a little aside. I mean, when I was young and stupid and unsaved, and that wasn't uh, not so very, very young, but I had this vision. There was actually a point in time when I didn't want to go to heaven, when I was unsaved. Mm -hmm. I didn't have much to worry about about going to heaven when I was unsaved. But because I had this vision of it's like, okay, we're all going to the big drive-in movie. There's this giant big screen, screen. Yeah. and everybody gets their turn. You walk up and there's your life. This is your life showing on the screen before everybody. Mm -hmm. And my mommy was going to be there too. 
I did not want her to see some of the things that I've done. I've done things that I would have to be very ashamed of had not the Lord God, through his work on the cross, erased them from the book. They're gone. Because when he took my sins away and I accepted that great grace, not only did he cast them away, he cast them as far as the east is from west, from the west. And he said in Isaiah 43, I will no longer call them to mind. He doesn't remember. So what will happen on that day of judgment? He will profess how I have loved him. Hallelujah. Mm. By being obedient. By being obedient. Okay. Mm. That's the testimony of the yes. saints. And by yes. the way, the testimony of the saints is what overcomes. You talk about, you know, go back to the word power. How do we overcome? Well, it says in Revelation that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony because we did not love our lives unto death. Okay. Right. Revelation 3.10. Because you have kept the word of my perseverance, I also will keep you from the hour of testing. That hour which is about to come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. You've kept the word of my perseverance. You know, the word says, speaking of those perilous last days that I believe we are in. in most definitely. Okay. That men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Mm -hmm. So Paul then writes to Timothy and says, For the time will come will they, when they will not endure sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. But wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance with their own desires. Mm -hmm. Second Timothy 4, 3. You know, that, that's what's called a symbiotic relationship. There are a lot of people out there who are preaching not sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. The reason that they're able to do that is because there are a lot of people out there who want to hear right. what they're teaching. Okay? They give them the opportunity. Well, one couldn't exist without the, the other. other. That's right. right. Jesus was also speaking of the trials and tribulations of the last days mm -hmm. when he spoke to his disciples and said, the one who endures to the end, he will be saved. Matthew 24, 13. Mm -hmm. The sound doctrine that has to be endured, that is so onerous to the flesh, consists of teaching like self-denial. Mm -hmm. If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny mm -hmm. himself. Mm -hmm. Self-sacrifice. Yes. Whoever loses his life for my sake, Jesus said, he is the one who will save. He went on and he said, no one can be my disciple who does not give up all of his possessions. Mm -hmm. In the Sermon on the Mount, he also said, you know, if you're angry with your brother, you're guilty of murder. Jesus taught that we're to pray for those who persecute us mm -hmm. and love our enemies. Yes. We are to forgive the people who hurt us. Yes. Otherwise, the Father won't forgive us. We're to humble ourselves and serve others as Jesus did on the night of that Last Supper when He, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the King of Glory, got down on His knees and washed the feet of His disciples. You know, the list of difficult things that the Word says would be far too long to put here because it's most of the Bible. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's a fact. Now that doesn't mean that it's a burden because his burden is light. And Jesus said, I can't, you might have joy. That's right. He wants our joy to be made full. And he has a promise for everything that he puts in there. There's a promise. Absolutely. He wants us to have life and have it abundantly. Yes. But that, you know, he, it's not what the world tells us what abundant life is. Yeah. That's the whole problem is because we don't, you know, if, you do, if you're not abiding in the Word, and you don't have that connection to the Word, which only can come through the Holy Spirit, by the way. The Holy Spirit was sent to lead us into all truth. Jesus is all truth, right? And that's the power. Yes. So you have to have that connection to the Lord to know this truth. But if you don't know this truth, 
what the world says is going to sound right to you, mm -hmm. and it's wrong as can be, okay? And it'll fill you with fear. Absolutely. And the same way, you know, I'm going back to the very beginning of what we were talking about. The world tells you that power comes from might. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I can remember when I was a young man, I heard this many, many times, might makes right. Mm -mm -mm. No. Right makes right. right. And the Word of God is right. And the Word of God brings power. Yes. But it's the Word of the Cross. It's the Word that looks like utter defeat. Right. That will save you. Oh, how the devil may have danced on that Friday. Mm. But come Sunday. But come Sunday. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Yeah. Like I said, <clears throat> we have to endure, right? That there's that constant conflict between that Paul talks about between our flesh and our spirit. Mm -hmm. We have to endure. Yes. And he will give us the way no, to do absolutely. it. Absolutely. He's going to lead us on our own. Yes. Because it is, this is what it's about is his power, not yes. ours. Yes. All right? yes. I can do all things through, through Christ, Christ who strengthens me. through him who strengthens me, right? Mm -hmm. We've got to watch out for that disconnect from the word. Right, right. Okay. Remember, it was in John chapter 6 that many of his disciples walked away and left him because his word was too difficult. And then he goes on to say in this letter, he says, I will also, I also will keep you from the hour of testing. Right? Okay. Now, the, the deal is here, depending on what translation you're using, the King James says temptation. The New King James says trial. He'll keep you from the temptation. He'll keep you from the trial. Mm -hmm. um, the Good News translation, which I'm not a great fan of, says he'll keep you from the trouble. All right? The question is not, I mean, are we, are we talking about tribulation? Are we talking about trials? Are we talking about, well, it says that the, many of the afflictions are the righteous. Let's get that out of the way right now, right? So the question becomes, will the Lord prevent us from going through the testing or keep us safe and faithful as we go through the testing, right? Mm -hmm. It seems from a lot of verses, specifically speaking of the last days, that believers have to go through persecution. Yes. This, Matthew 24, this is Jesus speaking specifically about the last days. Right. He said, then they will deliver you to tribulation and will kill you and you will be hated by all nations because of my name. That's speaking mm -hmm. to believers, his mm -hmm. disciples. Mm -hmm. And then Paul writing to Timothy says, Indeed, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's nothing in Scripture that should give you the right to believe that you're never going to face those trials and tribulations and persecutions, okay? Perhaps then the question should not be about whether it's testing trials or tribulations. Maybe the question should be about the hour, okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. No one knows. When the, you know, the time the Lord is speaking up here. When Paul wrote to the church in Thessalonica, right? Mm -hmm. In Thess 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, he wrote, Let no one in any way deceive you. For it, talking about the return of, the, of Christ, mm -hmm. the day of the Lord, will not come unless the apostasy comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction. Then he goes on and says, and you know what restrains him now, so that in his time he will be revealed. Well, it's got to be the Holy Spirit that restrains him. Exactly. And if the Holy Spirit is removed, we must be removed with him. Right. Look, God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. We are the temple of the yes. Holy Spirit. He's not going and leaving us behind. Right. All right. That, of course, leads to a great division. That exists in the church about the rapture. Exactly. Is it before the great tribulation? Is it in the middle of the tribulation? Is it after the tribulation? You know, there wouldn't be any there wouldn't be any debate about it if God had decided that He wanted to make it perfectly clear. Right. He didn't. And the very fact that He doesn't should tell you something that it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Okay. I believe that the Word makes it clear that our what our attitude should be. The Lord will either deliver us from that hour, or he will deliver us through that hour. So like Jesus, I want to pray, not my will, 
but thy will be done. Regardless. I'll trust, I'll trust in his love. That's right. Regardless, he's going to deliver us. Right. I'm going to trust in God's love. Whatever he decides right. is all right with me. Because, you know, I know how he loves me. I know that if God is for me, who can be against me? I know that no matter what happens, God will work it for my good. Amen. I know that because that's what he said through the word. And I believe him. Okay. Think about those three young faithful men mm. living not in Jerusalem, the place of God, but in Babylon, mm. the, the epitome of the world, all right? right? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He did not keep them from the fiery furnace, mm -mm. but he certainly kept them through mm -hmm. the fiery furnace. Yes, he did. Hallelujah. In Daniel chapter 3, right? It says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, mm -hmm. O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to give you an answer concerning this matter. If it be so, talking about getting tossed into the fire, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire. And he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. Mm -hmm. But even if he does not be it known to you, O king, that we are not going to serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Mm -hmm. That's got to come to be yeah. our attitude. Yes. We trust in God, so no we don't what. care. Doesn't we know matter. that he is able. We know that he loves us. We know that the Father gave his only begotten Son to deliver us from our sins, yes. we've got to learn to trust in Him. Because He has a purpose. You know, we, we read this story and it's just become a story. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It's not a story. It is a testimony yes, is. of the power of God. Amen. It is a testimony mm. of the faithfulness of God. It is a testimony that has brought glory to God since the time that it happened 20, more than 2,500 years ago. Amen. God should use our lives to bring glory to his name. That's my desire. Amen. That's my desire for my life. That's right. Use my life, Lord, for the glory of your name. Be glorified. I trust in him. And I know that the end of the matter is better than its beginning. Always. <laughs> I know that there is coming that day when I will stand in the presence, mm. physical presence of Jesus Christ. I know on that day mm. Because by his grace and mercy, I have been faithful to proclaim his name, that he will proclaim my name. I know that the people who have been so upset by me, who are who have made themselves their enemies of me, they will wind up bowing down before me. Not because of me, but because of the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus will be, be there. I'm going to be part of that bride without spot or wrinkle. By the grace of God. Not by my own strength, not by my own power, but by his spirit, saith the Lord. That's what I have to look forward to. That's the inheritance. That's what, if you're being faithful, abiding in his word, walking in faith, that's what you have to look forward to. That's exciting. It should it's excite you. It's very exciting. It should excite you. I mean, you know, as we've traveled, many, so many people ask me, because the church is so denominational. That's a nice way of saying the church is so divided. divided yeah. Such division. So people say, oh, you know, what, what kind of Christian are you? Are you a Baptist, an Episcopalian, a Church of England, a Roman Catholic? I say, I'm excited. That's right. You know, I'm, if that's not satisfactory, you just don't get it. What kind of Christian am I? I'm excited. I, I am excited about the Lord that I serve. I am excited about what God has done for me. I am excited that he has chosen me and Alice to be temples of this Amen. Holy Spirit. Amen. I am excited that my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. I am excited that he has me in the palm of his hand where no man can snatch me out. I am excited that he who is faithful and true, who is holy and true, has spoken to me mm. through this word and said to me, you're safe palm of his hand. Whether you go into the fire or I take you, deliver you from, you're safe. safe. He's got you. Thank you, Lord. Whatever he chooses, I pray that it would just glorify him. Mm. Whatever he chooses in my life, whatever my life brings tomorrow, I pray that it glorifies God. Yes, That's what I want to get from the word of God. I want to get that attitude. It says, 
in Philippians chapter 2, have the same mind, have the same attitude in you that was in Christ Jesus. He chose to serve the Father's purpose. And because of that, He is exalted. He is the name above all names at which every man's knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You want, you want power? Good. Surrender. You want strength? Boast in your weakness. And we need to pray, creating us a clean heart, oh God. Amen. Because we know that's where he's searching. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> well, all right. That was good. Well, you know, we're gonna, I don't want to... The next part of that verse is talking about the hour which is going to come upon the whole world. Mm, that, that, you know, that will you, think, you think that we've had a world war? You think that the first world <coughs> war was a world war? You think the second world war was a, was a world war? No, no, no. Wait, do you, wait do you see what's about to come. But hallelujah, the victory is already determined. The outcome is already written. The script is there. Hallelujah. We know how it ends because we have the script. Yes. So... Come on back and be with us the next time. Yes. So we'll talk about this, the hour which is about to come on the whole world. Praise you, Jesus. So, Father, we just praise you and we thank you. Yes. We thank you for your word. We thank you for everything that was written mm -hmm. in earlier times for our instruction. We thank you that you have given us your word. God, breathe that we might be trained in righteousness, that we might be corrected and reproved. Father, we just thank you, above all, for your word that was made flesh and dwelt among us. We thank you for your son, Christ Jesus, who came in this world, humble, born in a manger, died on a cross, that we might live in you. We just praise you and thank you, Father, for all that you're doing, for all that you have done, and for all that you are yet to do in our lives. We just bless your holy name. Amen. Amen. Well, Hallelujah, we finished another session. So until next week, I know that Alice wants to tell you once again. Jesus loves you. A lot. So until next time, hallelujah, be used for the glory of his name. Amen. God bless you and goodbye.